Doesn't fall out. <clears throat> Good to go. Uh, Anthony, right? Yes. All right. Where, where are you coming in from? So I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. That's where I was born. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, Bedford, Ohio. Okay. Yeah, awesome. how, how long where, did where, you move out of here? Where, whereabouts in Cleveland? So I live on the west side in the stockyards. I don't know how familiar you are with the neighborhoods over there, but if you know we're like Tremont and Gordon Square, Ohio City. West, um, west side, some of that no, type of stuff. Not that far. I'm, I was, I was east side. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I went to high school in Wycliffe. Do you know where that's at? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool, cool. Small world, huh? For real. <laughs> so yeah, we've been conversating via email, guys. Um, for everybody tuning in live, um, so I guess let's uh, let's just get right into it. Um, what what is the um, the app all about emp fitness and just give us a little brief explanation okay so emp fitness what we've done is we've created a cryptocurrency um we've called it hawk coin which stands for health and wellness coin basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to disrupt the way that the health and the health and wellness industry works um so think about on average in america 58 dollars is spent a month for a gym membership um, and, and if you do the research, it says 38 of that dollars is actually wasted. Um, so what our goal is to do is to create partnerships. You said $38 is what? Wasted. Gotcha. Um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to create partnerships, uh, with gyms, yoga studios, anything health and wellness related. Uh, and through our app, our users will be able to find these places and they'll be able to go in there by scanning a QR code. Um, and on a pay-as-you-go type of uh, service. So instead of, you know, having a long-term commitment or signing the contract, you know, we want to make it a situation where they're only paying as they go. Okay. That's an interesting concept. I mean, <clears throat> I think every gym, I mean, there, there, are, there are some little smaller, like, boot camp type things where you can walk in and get and pay a one-time fee. But, like, the big, big gyms, like the LA Fitness, the 24-Hour Fitness, you have to like negotiate deals with them on a on a separate type of sure and you know that's always the that's always the first question someone asks you know is how do you get those bigger gyms uh interested uh for for me the, the way that i try to explain that to them is is by two reasons right um the first reason is if we start um down the path that we've already started you know where we're targeting the smaller boutique shops the mom and pop shops you know uh, the, the private yoga studios, you know, things that will allow us to build a user base um, to show that this actually works. It's something that people want to do. Um, then we can walk into those bigger places and say, hey, we got 100,000, 200,000 users. Do you want to have access to their business or not? Gotcha. You know, drawing back to Jason, uh, what I mentioned about, you know, that $38 being wasted. You know, um, when you when you bring it up to me that, you know, these big box stores are interested in that wasted thirty eight dollars, that's how they stay profitable. Um, what that does yeah. is that focuses on one on one out of 13 people in the United States. Um, that's the number of how many people ha ha have a membership, you know. So the other angle um, that we express to people what we what we're trying to do uh, for the businesses, you know, the bigger stores like that is, you know, there's 12 people that they don't see anyways. Right. So if we can entice those 12 people um, and even just a certain percentage of them uh, to start to use the app and maybe they want to go check out the facility, you know, the other side of it is if I send in my user to your facility because you just wanted to uh, gain some exposure and you decided to partner up with us, you might even be able to convince them to sign up a membership with you. Um, so it's kind of a free advertising, free marketing tool for the, for the gym. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're going after the people that aren't already the gym memberships, you know, um, and then we're going after the people that are, you know, think about traveling. How often do you travel, Jason? Often? Once a month. You work out yourself, no? Yeah. And you're stuck in that hotel gym where you can't really get your full workout in, right? Yeah. There's um, like... Imagine if you can pull an <laughs> app up, scroll through it, find a place five, five minutes down the street, cost you you know, four equivalent U.S. dollar. The company wants to charge, you know, based on what their membership fee is uh, for a one-time use, you know, you can go down there and get your workout in. 
Gotcha. Yeah, that, that does make it convenient when for travelers, for sure. Have you, how far along are you guys? With, so uh, right, right now we have like a, an early beta phase of our app out. It's more of a tool we're using to uh, build our user base, um, get a feel for <clears throat> what people inside the app are going to want to do and like what type of services we're going to be able to offer the users. Um, you know, you, we have to collect that data somehow. So we've gotten the app out to give the people an idea of what we're doing uh, and to use it as, as, like I said, that data collection tool. Right now, um, what we've also done is we've got our ERC-20 token code written. Um, we have a smart contract, you know, for our token generation event um, so that we can launch that. We're in the process of, of getting out our actual website that will allow for the, the, the token sale. Um, and above and beyond that, we've had plenty of talks with uh, partnerships. So we've started to create partnerships with uh, people that are going to be offering services in the app. What kind of also uh, found you actually started negotiating with uh, um, companies. Yeah. So we've got companies and then we've had, we have, you know, like individual service providers as well. What do you mean individual, individual service provider? So like yoga instructors, oh, okay. you know, uh, personal trainers, you know, so, it, like, it, and when we say like, health and wellness, you know, it's, it's been a wide variety. So we've talked to people that, that offer like, you know, massage and, and recce type services. And, you know, we've talked to uh, cosmetologist people, you know, there's a wide variety of, of different partnerships that we're working on creating um, just to give people the ability to have things to do inside the app once we do launch it. So like personal trainers, like I can go on the app and look for a personal trainer, I guess in my area or if I'm traveling or personal trainer that does specializes in this, like that, that'll, that'll be on there as well. Correct. So you'll be able to look for, you know, the specialized services. You're going to be able to look by like zip code, you know, by where you're at. Um, I also think that, you know, in the long run, this becomes a tool that, a personal trainer can be out of town and still offer services um, because he's able to list his services to people in that zip code now. Right. Um, <clears throat> yeah. If that makes cool. sense. Yeah. yeah. So if a guy wants to go for, you know, to LA or New York for a month, can still make money as a personal trainer and uh, you know, the, the app will feed yeah, him. You know, through the, through the rating systems, you know, in, in, the feedback that the users are going to be able to provide on these trainers. You got to think about it like this. You might, we might get lucky and, and get some big time trainers on the, on our list, you know, and think about people that don't have access to figuring out who these people are, how to get a hold of them, what the cost is. They can't even try to think about working out with someone that, um, you know, maybe a celebrity or, or someone that has more money has access to, but if we can get people like that in the app as well, um, you, you could potentially have them fly in and, and give you a week of training. You know, it's, it's things like that. We're trying to close the gap between people having the ability to um, know how to find these types of things and then also being able to afford it. You know, when, when I mentioned one out of 13 people have a health or wellness or gym membership, uh, those 12 people, Jason, when you speak to them, you get three common answers, you know, um, one is they can't afford the membership. Two is who likes commitment, you know, so they, that's what they say. Um, I just don't want to deal with the contract or the commitment, yeah. you know, and then, and then the third answer is just those people don't want to work out. They don't want, they're, they're not on the health journey, you know? Okay. So how, what is the gamification and incentivization model? Say that again. What is the gamification or incentive incentivization model? The, so you're talking the, the, like the coin, like, so like why, 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 why go blockchain for everybody out there? Just like why blockchain? So we're, we're asked that frequently as well. Right. Um, I think a lot of people might ask that because of some of the other types of apps that you'll see out in this space, like class pass or mind body. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, Let me just, uh, but they you know, class pass. Yep. Or mind body. They do similar things, but they haven't gotten around the subscription model. Um, they also don't offer the other types of things that we're trying to offer, which requires the blockchain. Um, so on the backside of our project, uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to be able to take biometric data, allow people to store that in a hash environment, 
um, and then take that hash and log that into the blockchain um, so that they have their personal private biometric data available to themselves um, privately, securely, um, and to anyone they might want to share it with. Think about like a high school student who wants to show his coach, you know, what he's done in, in, in the course of the summer um, in preparation for the football season. You know, if he can show um, the data that he's stored and have it compiled on the blockchain um, to show that it was done on that day, you know, in that fashion, um, and it's verifiable, that, that's going to do a lot for people. You know, I mean, the other side of it is, is think about if you go and run a mile tomorrow um, and you do it in seven minutes and your heart rate's 164 beats, right? Um, and then two weeks from now, you go run that same mile, the same path, same same corners around the house, you know, and you come back and it was a seven minute mile, but your heart rate's 184. There might be something wrong with you, you know? Um, so by storing that data in, in the blockchain and having some AI technology, being able to draw at that data it, and give you an idea of, you know, what, is going on with your body, you're alerted and you're able to maybe contact your doctor um, or at least sit down and look at what's going on for yourself and kind of self-evaluate yourself and figure out why those numbers are so obscured. You know, think about the fact that um, if you're logging, you know, people like to log all their food and their calories and all these different things when it comes to health and wellness, right? If mm -hmm. you can do that through our app with your workout and your biometric data and you have an AI in the back, taking all of that information um, and it's giving you tidbits, right? So, you know, when you run your miles on Monday, if you ate salad for lunch versus a cheeseburger, you're going to get much better production because AI is going to tell you Monday an hour before you run, because it already knows you're going for the run. Like, Hey, you know, make sure you're eating salads for lunch this week. You know, gotcha. you um, can't do that stuff without blockchain. Um, Okay. Besides that, that, that storage part of it. Um, okay. What is this? What is incentivization model then? So then that, that's our loyalty program. Yeah. Um, what that does for, for the user, for the businesses is it allows them to, you know, track the, the transactions. Um, and then in a sort of, <clears throat> in a sort of system where, we're able to proof of stake all of those transactions through the blockchain. Then we're able to reward people based on loyalty programs. Um, so I get rewarded by, by what? By go, go so, to you know, like gyms? you would get awarded by, you know, holding, holding the tokens. You would get rewarded by, um, you know, how many workouts you might've went and did for a week. You know, there's, there's a list of things that we're working on right now. Um, to exactly explain all the parameters and the different types of things that you're going to be able to do for loyalty types of things that will be tra tracked. Um, so think about like your Fitbit counting your steps. You know, if we're able to count your steps through the blockchain, um, we're able to give you some loyalty rewards that way. Does that make sense? Hold on. I was, my phone's acting up here real quick. Hold on a second. Okay, can you repeat the last sentence? So, if you're, if you say, like, you know how you got, like, there's like a coin out there called Sweat Coin, for instance. What it does is it tracks, like, your steps outside. Um, and then you're rewarded tokens for that. And then you can convert those tokens into um, apparel, like shoes or, or like a, a two week pass at some gym, different things that, that's rewarded for it. Um, so, you know, we're going to have programs like that, that we're going to reward people in the token. You know, so whoever, whoever's in the app that's done the most amount of steps that month is going to get a token reward. Does that make sense? Gotcha. Okay. Makes um, sense. You know, the trainer, like whatever trainer had the most amount of individuals come through, you know, you got to think we're not going to tell these businesses or trainers what they're going to charge. That's kind of left up to them. Um, so, you know, if there's a guy that's really cheap and he's really good um, and he's getting the most amount of customers, we'll be able to know that by the, by the amount of different people that are sending him tokens, right? 
um, and we're going to be able to reward him accordingly. Where if you didn't do it that way, you know, the guy that's really the most amount of people because he's cheap and he's bringing it in there, he might not have the same dollar value as the guy that's charging three times as much, but he's not seeing as many people. You know, so why would he get the reward when he's not actually doing the community the, the service, right? Gotcha. Um, let's just say you want to – can you use the app for, like, your, your own personal? Like, that has nothing to do with going to a gym. But I guess you're going to need, like, some sort of biometric ring or bracelet to, to monitor. Correct. I mean, I, in, in the grand schemes of things, in a perfect world, we'd love to be able to get partnerships, you know, with the Apple Watch and all them other different things. Um, but you got to think, the way that technology is converting now, you know, there's a lot of this Bluetooth stuff. Uh, there's going to be ways for us to be able to communicate with the equipment in the gym, um, with the people's own personal equipment. We can create our own equipment um, if need be. Yeah, I'm sure you could just team up with them. There's, there's a lot of wearable devices already. That you could probably... Yeah, there's there's so many options for that. Um, it's just about making the right partnership, I think. Yeah. Instead of trying to take on doing that ourselves. Uh, I mean, there's people that's so far advanced in that. Uh, finding the right person <clears throat> to join forces and want to kind of push that along w- would be useful and resourceful, you know? You know, now can I, can I earn coins by just exercising? You can. So that was kind of like the, when I was using that sweat coin analogy, uh, you know, so uh, as we get into, you know, where we're able to interact with people's different wearable devices, that's tracking stuff. Um, we're going to be able to, track their footsteps and and all this stuff. And when they allow us to see that stuff, you know, you'll get rewarded for that stuff. So I could, you know, go out and run a mile right now because I'm going to get rewarded in tokens. Yeah. Correct. So the more fit I am, the more money I make. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously the more, the more you're going to put in, the more you're going to put in when it comes to work, you know, the, the more of those loyalty points you're going to earn. You know, um, we when what we think about is, you know, think about the social network aspect of it, right? Um, when you say, are you going to be able to do things on your own? Some of these partnerships that we're creating and the people that we're talking to, they offer more like online personal training services, right? So that would be more of like doing things on your own. Um, for me, myself, I find it a lot easier oftentimes to find someone to work out with, but that's hard to do. Um, so imagine in like our app, I can start communicating with other members, um, other users, and, and now we're able to go work out and, and do things together because we found each other in this app. Yeah, yeah, it's good, good social, good, good to implement the social networking aspect of it as well. Um, let me ask you, what is your background? So my background, um, I went to college for electrical engineering. Uh, I never completed that degree. Um, I moved from, from Cleveland down to Phoenix, uh, probably like 16 credits short of finishing that degree because I had an opportunity to get a job in the mortgage industry back in 2004. Um, So I rode that wave until 2008 when we all know what happened with the uh, recession. Um, Took a beating. I moved back to Cleveland and I started the company doing uh home renovations and i've kind of just been doing that since um you know going down doing that type of work i met a guy um back in 2015 named frank amato and he and i i did a lot of work for him he and i spent uh a lot of time talking about cryptocurrency and blockchain um eventually at some point he convinced me to get involved in it, you know, and then through the craze and the rush of it last year, I, I did fairly well trading it. Um, and Frank told me in December, he's like, it's going to crash. It's going to crash. You know, um, I kind of already felt that. I think anyone that kind of had an idea of what was going on kind of knew that, Yeah. you know, so I kind of, I wanted to, I didn't want to not be involved anymore but I didn't want to leave all the money in there, you know? So what I started doing was I, you know, I'm a firm believer in like startups and, and, you know, that's how I did the home renovation company. You know, I started from the ground up 
so I started looking into the ICOs and I started learning about the ICO process and all these new companies that were coming out and, you know, learning about um, what blockchain technology could really do and the changes that it could bring to the world. And, and I just really got intrigued by it, you know, and um, I've wanted to get involved in some sort of health and wellness center for five or 10 years now. I've um, just never been able to figure out how to do it. Uh, I've seen this opportunity here and, you know, I just started working on, on, on the white paper and, and trying to find the right people uh, that I have on my team right now. There's 13 of us um, that are working on this thing. This is, and, this and, is um, um, kind of like your, your idea. Yeah. So I came up with this idea in December. Um, in January, I got two of my friends together. Um, one's a lawyer and one's a financial guy. What, what are the um, names? Uh, Christopher Luske and Brian Karen. Okay, um, they're my co-founders. See them here on the O. Uh, I got together with those guys. You know, I had convinced them to start investing in cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. um, late 2017, um, they were interested in, in. You know, beginning of February, I think it was February 8th, we actually filed the entity paperwork, and we just been plugging away at this thing since, man. Cool, cool. You guys are based out of what? Where'd you file, Delaware? Or what? Oh, the entity paperwork. So we started the business. Uh, we created Everyone Makes Progress Incorporated in Cleveland, Ohio on February 8th, 2018. Okay. <clears throat> um, now the uh, the token generation event, is, is that uh, laid out? What, what do you mean by laid out? Like I'm, I'm looking for the, the uh, I'm looking for the PDF or the paper, the white paper. Let me get trying to go to it right now. PDF fitness. <clears throat> um. So what your what are your main competitors in this industry right now? You said um, class pass. So, and... yeah, it would be class pass and mind body. Mind body. Uh, but like I said, they're not really competitors. They just kind of offer something similar, right? So class pass will give you the ability to pay them a membership fee. And then you can kind of float to different types of classes. Um, but they only let you go to, you know, so if you went to the yoga studio, if you say you get the membership, you get five places a month. You go to the yoga studio the first time you can't go back to that same studio until, you know, the next month of that membership. Mm -hmm. So they're not really giving people the yeah. ability to choose where they want to go, when they want to go, <clears throat> and only pay as they go, you know? Yeah. Think about it. They might not go to all five that month still, right? Yeah, so, so they're like a membership for the memberships. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then Mind Body is more of, they're getting more into trying to um, allow people to find places to go. <clears throat> But they're more of a back end tool for the businesses, giving the businesses, you know, tools and capabilities to run their businesses more successfully. But you can also go on there and find, you know, other places in your area and stuff like that. So I'm just reading over the white paper real quick. Um... So the app is, is the app downloadable right now? So if you have an Android device, you can download that basic beta version I told you that's out that we're using for a data collection tool. Um, it is there. Uh, is there anything proprietary? That you would you say mean as in like, like, do we have any patents or anything like an that? An algorithm or yeah, patent or anything like that? Uh, so we don't have anything filed in that manner, no. Um, that now, so Jason, that's something that we've definitely talked about though. Uh, part of what that boils down to is, you know, time and, and, and the money side of it. Uh, you know, so it was definitely, um, trying to find a way to patent some of this stuff or, or do things that we need to do to protect it. Um, once we raise the capital that we're trying to raise through the token generation event. Yeah. <clears throat> what what is the I mean you're trying to raise how much again? So we have a soft cap of five million and a hard cap of twenty five million. 
and the and the the uh, the the bulk of the money is going to be used for. So the bulk of the money is going to be used for you know uh, marketing, advertising, getting the getting the business off the ground, you know hiring the the, the employees full time, you know, um, and then you know creating partnerships. Um, and, and doing, you know, the research to finish building out this app. We already have uh, people in place to really push this app out in a fast manner uh, and, and really take it from where we have it now to a completely different level. But all, again, all that stuff costs costs money, you know. Yeah. Um, so we're at the phase in the game now where, where we, we're ready to move forward. We just need the capital to, to, to make that next giant step. You yeah, know, and, and with that capital, um, this thing in our eyes is going to explode. Do you have any strategic partnerships set up already? As in, like with service providers and yeah. Uh, well, yeah. So, the, well, the, besides that, that, that those negotiations that you're going to have to make once the app is finalized. But like, do you have any partnerships set up right now with anybody in this industry? Maybe. I'm kind of confused by what you're asking. Like your team, you, you, you actually got to win. You know, when you, when you're a blockchain company, you build the team, your team gets bigger, right. and bigger. Um, and uh, I just wondered like what, like how big is the team right now? And if you set up any people, strategic partnerships in this industry. So, yeah, we have, we have like the 13 people that are working on it right now um, <clears throat> that are on our team. You know, these are all people that we've found that, that do this type of stuff. Then we have uh, a company called uh, BX3. They're out of New York. Um, they do some consulting work for us. Um, like I said, the guy that got me involved in this, Frank Amato, he's he's given me some advice along the ride. Um, and we're also talking to a couple other people right now um, about forming some partnerships to try to maybe break into the Asia market and things like that. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Um, let's see if I have any other questions. No, I think that's it. Um, yeah, we've, we've been conversating via email, so we'll, we'll go back to there. But um, I want to thank uh, Pitch Investors Lives for connecting us. And uh, if you got anything, you know, you got any questions for me, we'll wrap it up. No, uh, like you said, we've been talking through the emails, so we can just jump back to that. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to follow in your footsteps and, and thank Pitch for getting us involved, uh, getting us to be able to put this pitch together here. Um, and then I want to thank you for taking the time to sit here and, and let me pitch you like that. Definitely. All right, guys. Thank you very much, Anthony. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next right. pitch. Take it easy, Jason. Thank you.